While surveying the site of some ancient ruins, two young archaeologists, Derek and Margot, and their nomad friend, Moki, find themselves trapped and sinking in a world of And when the dust settles, they stare up in awe at a vast chamber filled with giant relics and artifacts from another civilization. And there, at the far end of the cavern, a door with a strange inscription. All who enter these portals pass through time. take you. Oh, thanks for the lift. We're very grateful. We are. I see a caravan coming down the other road. They might take you with them, but be careful. When they get to Egypt, they might also try to sell you. Huh? Joseph? Well, uh, yes. Ah, and who bowed down to you this time, little brother? The king of the Nile, the queen of the night? It's funny how someone's always bowing down to you, of all people. Ah, but it's only in his dreams. <laughs> Did someone bow to you again? Who? What? Tell your father. It was the moon and eleven stars. And... And the sun. Even the sun. You know how I favor you, Joseph, because you're the first son for my beautiful Rachel. You and your baby brother, Benjamin, are all I have left of her. But you worry me. He thinks he's our king. Shall all your brothers, even I, come and bow down to you? <laughs> I think not. I'm sorry, Father. I wasn't going to tell my dreams anymore. I don't know what they mean. Nor do I, but dreams are significant and yours give me worry. I puzzle over them often. Yes, you worry me, but not enough to deny you a special present. A present? For me? We work. He gets presents. Oh! oh. Come, try it on. First he thinks he's our king, then our father dresses him like one. He probably got it for spying on us out in the fields and tackling to father. <sighs> well, do you like it? Like it? Why, it's the most wonderful coat I've ever seen. Brothers, look at this! We are. What's the occasion? A proud father needs no occasion to show love for a son. Well, I wouldn't wear that masterpiece when you ride across the plains to spy on us common shepherds tending our flocks. Spy? I don't spy. I just visit you and come back and tell Father how everything's going. 
Don't be like that, my sons. The boy keeps me informed about the flock, that's all. Of course I'll wear this coat on my next trip. <laughs> oh, these colors will scare off any wild beasts I might meet. <laughs> Strange. I thought the opposite, that all those colors might attract them. Ha! <laughs> that's enough talk. It's time you poor common shepherds were on your way with the sheep. You've got a five-day ride ahead of you. I'll see you in about two weeks. Look at that! The dreamer comes, two weeks to the day, and you don't think he's a spy? If he believes I'm gonna bow down to him when I see him, it's his face that'll taste the dust. I'll not bow. Not now. Not ever. Nor I, spoiled brat. Wearing that coat like a peacock. What comes of dreams if the dreamer dies? No, I won't lift my hand to kill a brother. But if the desert did it for us? Ah, the dry well. We could put him in the pit and let nature take its course. Well? Well? Now get him! What are you doing? enough to dream down there. A lifetime. on the way to Egypt. Oh, I have an idea. Let's not let Joseph die in the well. Let's sell him. To them. To the merchants. Yes, that's a good yeah, idea. Yes, yes, yes. That's right. right. No matter how he deserves to rot down there, we should be compassionate. After all, he is our brother. <laughs> He's all yours. Am I seeing what I think I'm seeing? D did they just buy that guy? Oh, I'm afraid so, Moki. We're back in around 1500 BC, and slavery was very common. Joseph, tonight, dream of me wearing your beautiful coat. I guarantee you, this dream will be true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, that coat. All those colors. And they called him Joseph. Are you thinking what I am? That young man may be the Joseph, one of the most famous people in all biblical history. Oh, then I guess I'd better pay attention, huh? Joseph, uh, those men waving your coat, the ones who sold you, who are they? Would you believe? They are my brothers. Move on! No talking! Uh, if we're in a time and place where brothers sell brothers, and we're with the guys who bought him, I think we're in trouble. <laughs> if you dig my digging... We dig. We'll split as soon as we can. gone. Where is he? What happened? We sold him to Midianites. Your share's over there. Oh. <laughs> we'll splatter this rag with lamb's blood, and we'll tell Father we found it out in the plains. He heard me warn Joseph of the wild animals around here. Yes. <laughs> Rawr. so long my rear end is up in my stomach. We'll pull off at the first turn. What happens to Joseph, Margo? He gets sold into slavery in Egypt. Oh, great. Well, believe it or not, it does turn out great. At first. Mm. 
he sold to a kind nobleman named Potiphar. And after years and years of hard work and being very, very smart, Joseph was put in charge of all his master's affairs. A reward for your loyalty and excellence, Joseph. I give you custody over all this, everything you see, my house and all my affairs. You're generous, my lord Potiphar, and I'm most grateful. Hey, he's looking good. <laughs> yep, that's what Potiphar's wife thought, too. Yes, my lady, is there something I can do for you? Joseph, do you not find me desirable? Madam, please. I respect my master, your husband, even if you do not. Wait, Joseph. Come back. my dearest. I promise you. Derek, hang a right. You got it. Oh, it was great that caravan picked us up. But Moki was right. They might have been planning to sell us, just the way Joseph's brother sold him to them. And the way they sold Joseph into slavery in Egypt. How do you know what happened to Joseph? Oh, I know his whole story, Moki, and it's fantastic. Oh, I wish we could jump ahead in time and see what happens. I wish we could get out of this sandstorm. <gasps> Look! Those are the symbols to the door to time. But, but how? City, aren't we? We're looking for a friend of ours, a Hebrew named Joseph. You know him? Everyone who's anyone knows Joseph. He runs the prison. He's a prisoner himself. A kid? A about 17? No, a man about 30. Now go away or you will meet him. In prison. We've jumped forward 13 years. <laughs> no wonder my head is still spinning. Joseph, here are the king's butler and baker. They have angered him. You handle them. It's not comfortable, but you'll be able to sleep. I don't want to sleep. I might have that dream again. I don't know what it means, and it's driving me crazy. Surely God knows the meaning of your dreams. Tell it to me. God may show me the meaning. I saw a grapevine with three branches. I squeezed the grapes into the king's cup. Then I served it to the king as I have done when I waited on him. The three branches on the vine are three days. In three days, you will be back in your job serving Pharaoh. When you are released, please tell him of me. I have done nothing to be in prison for. I too have had a dream. Would you hear it? Of course. There were three baskets on my head. Then the birds flew in and ate all the food in the baskets. What is the meaning? Your three baskets are also three days. Then I too will be freed? No. In three days, the king will hang you, and the birds shall eat your flesh. Everything's ready for the pharaoh's birthday celebration. What's holding us up? 
is troubled, strange dreams, and the wise men cannot tell him the meanings. No, I don't know what to do. Dreams. dreams. The Hebrew Joseph. He understood everything that happened in my dream. And he was right about everything? Everything, including the uh, late baker and the uh, uh, birds and... Uh... Bring him to me. At once! Why are all the shops closed? Where's everyone going? Yeah, what's happening? It's Pharaoh's birthday celebration and feast. Feast? Did you say feast? He grew up so fast. I have heard you can tell the meaning of dreams. If so, you are wiser than my wise men. The wisdom does not belong to me, but to the God I serve. He will help me know the meaning of your dreams. I was standing by the Nile, and seven fat cattle came up out of the river and fed on the meadow. Then. Seven lean and hungry cattle came up from the river and ate the fat cattle. Then I dreamed of a stock with seven full and good ears of corn. Then seven withered and thin ears of corn sprang out of the stock and the thin ears ate the good ones. Then I awoke. Both dreams have the same meaning. God wants you to know what is going to happen. The seven fat cows and the seven good ears of corn are the next seven years. God is telling you there will be seven years of plenty. The seven lean cows and the seven thin ears of corn are the seven years of famine that will follow the seven years of plenty. God has given you these dreams as a warning for you to prepare for the famine. You should appoint a wise man to look after the food supply during the plentiful years, so there will be enough food for all during the famine. A wise man, you say? Yes. I see only one wise man in my entire kingdom, and you are that man. Surely the Spirit of God is in you. This is Joseph. He is my right hand. His word you will obey. In this whole land, only I am greater than he. Wow! I wonder what his brothers would say if they saw this, or what he would do to his brothers now. Now you're getting to the heart of the whole story of Joseph Moki. Now let my birthday celebration begin! I believe the people should meet your new right hand personally. If you will excuse me, sire. You are a wise man indeed, Joseph. Uh, hi, Joseph. Long time no see. But I remember you. The travelers with the caravan. <laughs> That's us. On this day of miracles, perhaps this is the most miraculous. You haven't grown a day older. And look at me. Uh, well, we work out a lot. You ought to try it. Oh, uh, yes, in this Egyptian air and, um, the Nile. The Nile is, is great for the skin. Y can't you tell? I'm much taller. You three interest me, truly. Stay, be my guests. There's enough corn here for the whole world. What a smart idea of yours to store the grain. It was not my idea, Margot. It was God's plan to save a people. Enjoy this moment, for this is the last of our bounteous harvest. Now, the terrible famine begins. Joseph, 
We'd be starving like those in Canaan if it weren't for his foresight. Next. What a place. It should be. He's the second most important man in Egypt. But will he sell us the grain? He should. We've brought enough money. He comes. Quickly, show him respect. Bow down. Bow down! Well, what is it? Who are you? Ten brothers from Canaan bowing to you, great majesty, out of respect. <gasps> My brothers. What is it? What's wrong? Are you all right, majesty? Oh, Lord. I ask your guidance. What's wrong? What did we do? What's going on? I don't understand. What's wrong? wrong? You are spies. You plan to bring an army against our stricken country. No, master, we are not spies. We are brothers come to buy food for ourselves and our families. Brothers, are you all here or is there another? And is your father alive? Yes, our father lives. And yes, again, there is another brother, our youngest, who remains with him. Guards! Take that one and bind him! Me? Why me? You'd rather sacrifice one of your other brothers. No? How brotherly. This one goes to prison. The rest may go back with all of your sacks full of grain. But then you must return, bringing with you your youngest brother. Or I'll know you are spies, and I'll put that man to death. You don't wish to lose a brother, do you? No, no, you can't take Benjamin, not my youngest. But if we don't, he'll kill Simeon. Simeon's as good as dead now. Look, all the money we paid for the grain is packed inside with it. And how? Oh, great gods, he'll think we took the grain and stole back our money. You're right. It's a disaster. Simeon's dead. No, wait. If we return with the money and Benjamin, just as he said, we'll prove we didn't steal it and we're not spies. Why did you tell him you had a younger brother? We told the truth. We didn't know what he'd say. Father, this grain won't last long. We'll have to go back for more anyway. And we can't go back without Benjamin. He might not only kill Simeon. I've already lost Joseph. Benjamin alone is left of Rachel's children. I must go, Father. I must. These are my brothers. Yes, you must. God has willed it. Here, let me fill this for you. The grain comes out pretty fast. Okay, Margo, open the gate. Here, kid, just watch me. Okay, my boy, let the rip. The men from Canaan are returning. Yay! Oops, sorry, Moki. <laughs> oh, oh, that's okay. Just pour some milk and sugar on this cereal, and I'll eat my way out. Yes, 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 I think yes, sir. My lord. The Hebrews have returned, and there are ten of them. Then release the hostage, and tell them they are to have dinner with me. Simeon, a free man! You look fine! Reuben, <laughs> Levi, <laughs> Judah, all together again! <laughs> they don't know who Joseph is yet, do they? No. I wonder what they'll do when he sees Benjamin. You are the youngest? Yes, sir. My name is Benjamin. Yes, yes, all right. This is strange. 
strange, do you see? We're seated according to our age. Look, how can this man know our ages? If they only knew. What else does he have in mind? <laughs> I know what I've got in mind. The Hebrews are preparing to leave? Yes, master. Secretly put their money back as before and hide my silver cup in the young boy's sack, the one they call Benjamin. You there! Wait! Stop! My master's silver cup is gone. You will be searched. Search us. See for yourself. If the cup is found, let that one die in whose sack it is discovered, and the rest of us will be your servants. If I find the cup, the one in whose sack it is found will be taken to be my master's servant. returned evil for good. God is surely punishing us for our sins. We are all your servants. I don't want you. This one will be enough, the one who took the cup. The rest of you, return home. Take him and you kill his father, our father. Please, sir, hear me a moment. Everything you've asked of us, we've done even to hurting an old, feeble, loving man. He begged us not to bring Benjamin here. He lost the only other son this boy's mother had. Take me, sir. I will be your slave, but please don't kill our father by taking that boy. I offer the same, I will be your slave. And I as well, so will we all. Yes, put me back in prison if you like, but spare our brother so that his father may live. You will all do this for a father? And a brother? We will! I am your brother. I am Joseph. Oh, no! God, this no, can't no, be a Joseph! Us, really. I am the same Joseph you sold into Egypt. No, no, don't be afraid. Don't blame yourself. I forgive you. You meant to do evil. But God has turned it into good. Everything that has happened in our family was the will of God. He sent me here to save a nation and to save you and all the families that will spring from you who will become still another nation. This terrible famine will last five more years. You must bring our father, all your families. As ruler under Pharaoh, I will take care of you. I love you, my brothers. He told them. He told them. And he forgave them. They're a family again. Now I know what is meant by brotherly love. Woohee! <laughs> there they are. All Joseph's brothers and their families. And look who's leading them. Jacob, their father. And there's Joseph. Moving fast. And why not? It's been a long time since he's seen his father. Oh, that's right, I forgot. Wow! What a big family! Oh, they're only the beginning, Moki. Joseph and his brothers began what's known today as the 12 tribes of Israel. And their numbers grew into the millions. So all those bad things that happened to Joseph... Everything that happened was the will of God. He sent Joseph to Egypt to save a nation, and then to save his family. And all the families that will spring from them and who will become still another nation.